Welcome back to yet another trailer breakdown. Just yesterday I put up a video talking about this recent Gogeta trailer featuring several different animated scenes from the climax of the film. You may have noticed that that original video is no longer up anymore. It turns out that one of my presumptions was entirely wrong, and while I did make it 100% clear in the video that everything was a guess and just to be taken with a pinch of salt, I'm not really happy leaving up content that could very easily spread major misinformation throughout this community. It's different when it's a small detail, but misattributing someone else's work and letting it sit there for weeks until I see the movie doesn't really sit right with me. As a result, this brand new video exists, which will correct that mistake, explain my thought process the first time around, and talk about what this new information means for the film. Since the majority of the video is perfectly fine, I'm going to splice in the first half of it now for anyone who may have missed it, and if you've already seen it, then feel free to skip on ahead to the new corrected part of the video. I'll leave a pinned comment down below with the exact timestamp, but before I get there I do want to address one thing. Some of you who saw the video yesterday will have noticed that I didn't reveal Gogeta in the title or thumbnail, whereas today I haven't kept it a secret. And I want to explain the reason behind that because I imagine a small minority of people might be a little bit upset. When the trailer first dropped, it was only part of a marketing campaign for merchandise, so I figured that not everyone would see that and so it was technically still in spoiler territory. Since then, that trailer has gone up on the official page from Toei, Funimation has tweeted about it and said they'll dub it, IGN has covered it, and the character now has its own official poster. It's officially revealed and not being treated as a spoiler at all, so I don't really see any reason to not talk about it openly at this point. I apologise if you were trying to avoid everything about this film, but I can only really cater to certain audiences, and the vast majority will have seen it at this point. I'm sorry if that upsets you, but thank you for understanding, and with that said, let's get underway with this video. We kick things off here with a little look at Gogeta, our first ever look, well, our first proper look that we're allowed to see rather than a leak, of Gogeta. He's looking pretty damn different from his debut in Movie 12 all of those years ago. This is looking to be a Now Hero Shintani correction, or possibly his own key animation. It fits very much in line with every single character sheet we've seen from him, and I kind of love it. Oh, it's just beautiful. Some of the key differences you can note here are that, of course, aside from the colours, which have been changed from orange to yellow to match the uh, lore-appropriate colour that we see on characters like Gotenks, his Widow's Peak has also been significantly reduced before he was kind of like Vegeta with a bang, whereas now it's a lot more human looking, I suppose. <laughs> Vegeta always looked a little bit of an alien head in that kind of made its way onto Gogeta in a pretty big way. So they've definitely gone out of their way to make this feel like a new Gogeta rather than just recycling the old design, and I kind of respect that. Moving along, we get a look at now Toshi Shida. Oh boy, this crazy man has stuck to the character sheets just like he said he would, and my jaw is on the floor. We're going to go through this step by step, really, because there is a lot to unpack here. He said a couple of months ago, you know, I really approve of Shintani's designs, and so I'm going to do my best to stick to them, and he really has. Of course, he hasn't compromised his shading in the intense close-ups, which is great, but the actual form is very different. The eyes are a lot softer and rounder, the ears are pretty much one-to-one -one with what you see on those sheets. It's looking great, and of course, this, if we go frame by frame here, this look at Gogeta, wow, it is so, so close to that first reveal. He's really done a great job here, and this is what I'm so glad to see big idiosyncratic animators taking on board. He hasn't compromised his style, though. You still have these little things here and there that are straying perhaps a little further from the sheets than you might expect, but they are still honoring them just great. I love, love, love the more angular face shape, those huge slanted eyes. This really is a Shida meets Shintani approach, and it's just gorgeous. Those effects are unbelievable. God. I mean, you can go through it frame by frame here, and you just have like a million impact frames. Shida is so good at this. And of course, we go through step by step here, and you can see his gorgeous looking effects billowing out. His crazy hands are always on show. Always. You cannot have a Shida cut without his crazy hands coming in. Of course, you can see here, facially, that is so Shintani. Look at those ears. Look at the more refined shading, the softer approach. This is perfect, and this is exactly what I was talking about the other day. You can be your own animator and stand out, but you can do it 
within amazing design sheets like these, and this is Shida proving to the world he can do it, and it is possible. Once again, you can see the same thing here on Broly if we go frame by frame, very much in line with the character sheets, but still not compromising that great shading. Form is much more important than anything else, and Shida's really understood that. There's a lot of background animation coming in here, you can see alongside his effects, you've got loads of cool looking I guess sharp line work on the floor that I think we spoke about in our last Broly video. That's been a staple of Shida for such a long time and it's all here. Again, a much softer approach. Those ears, very, very Shintani. Love the exaggerated big head on this pullback here. Very, very cool. And of course, all of those explosions if we pop back just a sec. This is the type of thing we always see from Shida and God, it's just nice to see. I have to say, I kind of, I kind of hope that in the full film, there's a bit more variety. I have to say, as someone who has seen Shida's work for the past 20 or so years, he's a bit formulaic, but it's always impressive. But at the same time, I kind of want him to try something a little bit different. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the full thing. And hopefully there's some really interesting stuff in here beyond, you know, his usual stuff, which again is very impressive, but you know, we've kind of seen it all before. Not a, not a massive criticism, just, you know, a personal issue as someone who has maybe studied this a bit too much. Now, this is the part of the trailer where I made a mistake yesterday. My initial guess was Yoshihiko Umakashi, who is the character designer for My Hero Academia. He's a legendary animator who's been all over the industry and even worked on the old DBZ series once under Studio Cockpit. He confirmed on a live stream a little while ago that he is on this film and was practicing drawing Gogeta. So when I saw this scene and I saw Broly looking reminiscent of All Might and all of these intense inky line effects that we've seen from Umakoshi for years, my mind jumped straight to him. And in fact, I wasn't the only person who felt this way. Many other people also interested in animation were tweeting about just how cool it was to see Umakoshi's work early. I was so, so sure of my guess. Unfortunately, I woke up this morning and I see a tweet from Chikashi Kubata, another animator on this film, and someone you may know for his work as character designer and chief animation supervisor on One Punch Man. Someone had asked him about these supposed Umakoshi sections of the trailer, and he replied, that's not my work, that's not Umakoshi's, that is Yuki Hayashi. That was a major mind-blowing moment for me, and when I went back to look at the scenes again, I felt like a total idiot for not seeing it. As a bit of background animation, Yuki Hayashi is an animator who used to work very closely with Toei. He was all over the best One Piece movies and TV specials, he did the finale for Resurrection F. He was so good that he kind of outgrew Toei and moved across to Studio Bones, who he'd been working with anyway just under a pen name, but he moved across there properly this time. He contributed lots of great scenes to shows like Kekai Sensen and of course, My Hero Academia under its character designer, Yoshihiko Umakashi. It seems like he has definitely been influenced by his work on that show quite a lot, and that sure explains why things look very similar and why I didn't bother to second guess myself. In retrospect, if we look at scenes like the power-up, which by the way, can we just acknowledge how jacked Gogeta is? You can see those stunning effects coming off of him, and those shapes can be found all over Hayashi's work, which makes me feel incredibly stupid for not noticing sooner. This is really clear in the next scene of Gogeta ramming into Broly as well. Those same shapes pop up once again. It was really obvious and I don't have eyeballs. The next section which features some terrific storyboarding from Nagamine was a personal highlight of mine in this trailer. I love that extreme foreshortening and I spoke about how these inky smears and effects were really familiar and they are, they just didn't lead me in the right direction. If we look at some of Hayashi's work on One Piece, for example, you can see that same bouncy timing, scribbly smears, and of course, perhaps the most obvious identifier, the debris as everything explodes. Unless there was a misunderstanding, Umakoshi will be doing something on this film, we just haven't seen it yet. The next section that I'd like to change my guess on is this particular part with Gogeta seamlessly dodging the beam. It doesn't look anything like Hayashi and absolutely nothing like Shida, and I made quite a tenuous link to Hiro Takani due to the character art resembling Takahashi, except with ears and shading that felt quite reminiscent of Nii's work towards the end of Super, where he was starting to adopt some of those old-school Takahashi-esque traits. 
Looking over Nii's work across other series, not particularly confident in that guess anymore. I think I jumped the gun a little bit. And with Chukashi Kubota in mind, I dove into his back catalogue to see if there was anything resembling his timing. This type of fluidity is found across all of his work, and with him so confidently stating that the other scene was Hayashi and not Umakoshi, while other animators I spoke to on the film had no idea who it was, I kind of wonder if maybe this could be him as they work so closely together on this finale. He produced some art of Goku a while ago that's incredibly old school, so it's certainly possible he'd be following in the footsteps of old school artists like Takahashi. He also confirmed that he's on the film today, saying it was his dream come true, so either way, even if my guess is totally off here, we've got some pretty exciting stuff to look forward to. But with that correction made, we can jump back to the rest of the original video, as I think most of it was fine. I'm sorry again for this mistake. Animation is really hard, and it's impossible to really get proper confirmations on things until I have full footage that I can create clips of to send to animators and ask questions about. Until then, it's a lot of guesswork and just praying that animators reveal things on Twitter. Anyway, back to the video. Sorry again for this mistake. This section in particular is so good. Not only do you get this manic, screaming, gaping mouth expression that's kind of reminiscent of what we saw from uh, Manabe back on Super, but you also get these amazing inky impact frames. Again, like I mentioned in the last trailer, this inky stuff you don't really see in Dragon Ball that much, yet it's here in full force, and I love that we're really bringing Dragon Ball into 2018 in a big, big way. This is everything I wanted to see. Once again, we get the explosion that we talked about in the video the other day. I said Shinji Hashimoto like an idiot because it was like 4am. I of course meant Takashi Hashimoto, the effects supervisor on the film. With that though, that is the end of this very short 24 second trailer. Wow, God, that was impressive. This is just 24 seconds of the finale. And we know for a fact that the fighting is like a good 40 to 45 minutes of the film. This is just going to blow every single Dragon Ball animated property out of the water. I cannot believe I am going to be sat in a theater in Tokyo in a little over a week now. My mind is going to explode. Oh, I hope you appreciated this breakdown. It was not scripted for once. This is just me screaming into a microphone after seeing this trailer for the first time. I love everything in here. I think it really sells just how good and versatile Shintani's designs are and how you can still be your own animator without moving away and ignoring them entirely. I'm sorry to dwell on that point, but I really feel like this was a very convenient trailer to drop after all of the controversy the other day. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope you enjoy this. Let me know down in the comment section below how excited this trailer made you. Tell me what kinds of things you really want to see from this fight. And of course, let me know what you think of Gogeta's new design. A lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for the old one. I have to say, I didn't like Movie 12. Please don't lynch me. So this is a dream for me. I finally get it. I finally understand why people love this character, and I really hope this film makes me fall in love with him for the first time. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to rate the video, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you next time.